Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Yesterday was a very long-awaited announcement. Basically, ever since ChatGPT came out and it became clear that big tech was going to reorient itself entirely around generative AI, a lurking question has been, when and how was Apple going to get into the game? We finally started to get the answer to that question earlier this year at the Worldwide Developer Conference when Apple announced its approach to Gen AI, which it called not artificial intelligence, but Apple intelligence. By and large, the theme of Apple intelligence seemed to be that this was AI for normies. This was AI that was abstracted. This was AI that took out all of the complication and fancy language and just focused on use cases that would actually drive value in people's day-to-day -day lives. The rebranding, while very on-brand for Apple to do, was also, I think, an attempt to move it away from the techie language. But to analysts and market observers, the Apple intelligence announcement was also about something else. Despite having lots of very popular products, Apple's revenue is still driven in large part by the iPhone. One of the big challenges with that is that at some point you reach market saturation, and each individual iPhone update is not significant enough to get people off the fence to go buy the newest version. Part of the big hope, then, is that Apple intelligence is a significant enough inducement that gets people off the line to actually go upgrade their phones. Well, yesterday we finally got the full iPhone 16 announcement event, and today we're going to discuss what, if anything, we learned that was new and how people are thinking about the Apple intelligence side of the announcement. In an announcement post, Apple writes, Today, Apple announced that Apple Intelligence, the personal intelligence system that combines the power of generative models with personal context to deliver intelligence that is incredibly useful and relevant, will start rolling out next month with iOS 18.1, iPadOS 18.1, and macOS Sequoia 15.1. Basically, this is a new feature for the most up-to-date operating systems, and in the case of the iPhone, using the latest A18 and A18 Pro chips. Now, what features of Apple Intelligence does Apple choose to highlight? The first they call out is writing tools, with which they say users can refine their words by rewriting, proofreading, and summarizing text, and that's across the suite of Apple applications, including mail notes, pages, as well as third-party apps. There's a new feature in the photo section called Memories that allows people to create movies by simply typing a description. In addition, Apple says natural language can be used to search for specific photos and search in videos to find specific moments. A new tool called Cleanup can identify and remove objects in the background as well. In the Notes and Phones apps, users have the ability to record, transcribe, and summarize audio, which is one feature that I'm particularly excited for. And then, of course, there's Siri. Siri, they write, becomes more natural, flexible, and deeply integrated into the system experience. They claim that Siri has richer language understanding capabilities, allowing Siri to follow along when users stumble over their words, and Siri now has the ability to maintain context from one request to the next. But those aren't all the features. And, of course, the trusty crew of AI newsletter writers and tweeters had their own summaries. For example, the iPhone and Mac now come with ChatGPT for free. ChatGPT can be accessed through Siri, and you can also share photos and create images and text within documents with ChatGPT. Another feature that people noticed is the ability to ask questions about files, a time saver in the form of finding documents and autofilling forms. For example, when you're filling out a form, you could ask Siri to go find a photo of your driver's license from your photos application and use the details to autofill the document. On-screen awareness is a feature that I actually think is less a specific feature and more a platform change that will have incredible impact in the long run. And then, of course, there's the things we already discussed, like AI-powered text editing, cleaning up images, generating AI images, and those AI-powered call transcripts. It seems to me that the feature that people are most excited about, or at least most chattering about, is visual intelligence. It's basically where you point your camera at something, use a new side button to capture it, and you can get all sorts of contextual information. Suppose you're out for a stroll and you stumble upon a restaurant you haven't been to before. Just click and hold the camera control and point your iPhone. With just a click, boom, your iPhone instantly pulls up restaurant hours, ratings, and quick options to check out the menu or make a reservation. And you can learn more with just a tap. Awesome. On the one hand, I think this feature is going to be total table stakes for smartphones going forward. But at the same time, I believe that because it's actually going to be hugely useful. This is already a sort of workaround that I've used when traveling with ChatGPT, although it still involves manual text input rather than just pointing my phone at something to get information. One of the cool things about this feature, if it plays out how I think it will, is that this is an example of AI actually obscuring in a positive way the lines between the digital and physical worlds. When you engage with your phone in this sort of way, you're not being ripped out of the real world, instead just experiencing the real world more fully. Now let's talk, though, about the questions that people have about these announcements. One of the big ones is the timing. 
As people were watching the presentation, some expressed confusion around why they were regurgitating so much of Apple intelligence that was already announced back at WWDC. To which Quinn Nelson at Snazzy Labs on Twitter said, For those confused by all this Apple intelligence regurgitation, don't forget that normies don't watch WWDC. Still prominent YouTuber wrote, This long rehashing of Apple intelligence is going to be awkward if the iPhone launches with iOS 18 and has none of these features out of the box, which appears to be the case. Axios points out, Apple's slow AI rollout threatens iPhone upgrade cycle. They write, Tim Cook touted the new iPhone 16 series on Monday as the first phones designed for Apple intelligence, but the company's slower-than-expected rollout of its AI services and features could put a damper on this year's upgrade cycle. This is what we were talking about in terms of the financial implications of this launch. That Apple, and Apple investors more specifically, are really looking to Apple intelligence to be a driver of new iPhone sales and upgrades more specifically, and that because the Apple intelligence features have been delayed, they're not rolling out right away when the phone ships, but are coming about a month later— that could delay the initial wave of upgrades, which is a big thing that Apple usually counts on. Even though Apple has been clear about this timeline, Axios writes, Monday's announcements made clear that early iPhone 16 buyers will be paying for the eventual ability to run Apple intelligence rather than anything immediately available out of the box. They point out that as that's happening, iPhone rivals in Samsung and Google are racing ahead with their own AI features. Another dimension or another skepticism or question when it comes to this rollout is the international dimension of this. Reuters writes, Apple's AI gap in new iPhones disappoints China users. Basically, the artificial intelligence features will not be available in China because the company hasn't yet announced an AI partner for China, which is a requirement of working in that country. Effectively, they can't bring ChatGPT into China. They need a local provider playing some of that role. The other place that isn't getting Apple intelligence features is Europe. As Philip Jobert points out, Apple intelligence is illegal in the EU, so the headline feature for the new iPhone is the camera slider. This comes after the EU AI Act and other data regulation, and again is not a new announcement, but this really puts a fine point on the fact that this entire market is getting locked out of these cutting-edge features. Lazar Riddick writes, To be clear, I think the lack of Apple intelligence on the iPhone 16 in the EU not only harms consumers, but also business users and professionals who will be put at a disadvantage compared to non-EU rivals. I think this balkanization of AI availability is going to be a conversation that increases in the future. Another point of conversation is this one summed up by Rachel Toback, who writes, Let's talk about risks with Apple's new camera button and visual intelligence AI tools and integrations, the potential ability to learn a stranger's identity by simply taking a picture. Without big third-party integration guardrails, this new camera button plus AI could invade privacy. Basically, if you see a person in the real world, all you have to do is take a photo and you can learn everything about them. Again, a lot of these criticisms are less about something right now and more about the future that we might be heading into. We also just saw a guy take a photo of a woman and her dog, which led to this tweet. Imagine encountering a puppy and its owner, and instead of asking them what kind of dog it is, you kneel down, point your camera at it, and wait for the result of Apple intelligence. Of course, this is tongue-in-cheek, but ultimately we will have a new set of social interactions that we have to figure out. Still, by and large, I think right now the tone is optimism. As summed up by former Evernote CEO Phil Libin, who writes... I'm impressed with the Apple intelligence stuff because it isn't super flashy. Apple is leaning into the toothbrush test, low stakes, high utility functionality that people will use multiple times a day. The AI industry needs more of this. That's sort of my belief going into it too, and I am excited to get my hands on these features in a couple of weeks. For now though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.